anytime. That wasn't a great thing to say now that I'm listening to myself. Um, but it was good. And then I got a lot of feedback from the other well, people. Call, call, me at any, call me anytime. Nothing wrong with saying that. Oh, okay. But you might say, you know, call me for anything, you know, no matter how big or small of a question it is. Like, you don't want, you don't want to train them to only call you when they want to buy or sell something. You want to train them to call you anytime they have any question. Okay. Any, any need. But you did fine. Yeah, so it was a productive day, and I'm looking forward to today because I've already rolled out my to-do list of everything that I have to do, and I'm staying focused. Andrew, <laughs> thank you. And <laughs> I said thank you to Andrew because he helped me with the cards, and oh, nice. I needed that because that was an anxiety for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have my cards. And once I remembered, he said that in a conversation, like, Ebony, calm down, do a digital card, figure this out, move on, and keep going so thank you Andrew. one step at a time one yes. step at a time um all right who else has some good news i know i don't know if brooke, i don't think brooke's on the call but brooke has written seven offers for the same buyer happens to be her <laughs> first transaction and she finally went under contract last night oh so, so give her uh give her props on um on the whatsapp group tell her congratulations I wrote an offer and received an offer. Beautiful. Beautiful. So hopefully we'll be binding on both of them today. All right. Sean, are you back in business? I, oh, I've been back in business. I just haven't been able to get online because I've been running nonstop. But I had someone call me out of the blue saying they are ready to buy. They're coming from California. Um, so I'm getting them set up with a few different lenders. Um, they've already been pre-approved out there, but they realize that they're going to move here. So that's right. good. And then start taking off and running there. And no joke, I am nonstop. Like the minute I get off this phone, I'm driving over to Timbuktu to help a renter who will be a future buyer in eight months, along with yep. another buyer, another virtual walkthrough. Yeah, I've just got tons of stuff. So I'm good for you. Good for you. And you even squeezed in a vacation, right? Praise be. Good Lord. Yeah. All right. We're here to fund our lives, not sling real estate 24 seven, right? Exactly. All right. All right. Anything else? Anyone else want to share anything? Well, Andrew, uh, I, I yes, love what you're doing, uh, by the way. What thing? I, what? I, I like that video in the car. You're just, you're being real you know oh yeah yeah the haircut girl yeah thank you um yeah <laughs> i i was in getting a haircut yesterday and um you know we were just talking and stuff and i was showing her some pictures of like my haircut for my engagement and stuff and i said hey by the way do you know anybody that wants to buy or sell any like real estate or anything like that she's like ask she's like actually yeah that girl over there does and um I was just like waiting on my chance to like say something to her. I'm like, I don't want to mess this up. But then I was, she was like shampooing my hair and then she walked back there. I was like, Hey, <laughs> she's like literally shampooing my hair. I'm like, Hey, um, she was telling me that you're thinking about buying a house soon. And yeah, I got all of her contact info. I sent her my the digital business card, my loan officer go. and, um, Oh, and the KW app. Link. Great job. Great job. The, uh, I had a guy come over to my house, um, my HVAC guy come over to the house the, mm, yesterday, day before yesterday. And he brought a, um, uh, like a, like a partner. I'd never met the guy before, uh, to help fix something that some other guy messed up. And, um, the Dan, this, this guy that's been doing my HVAC for like 10 something years, um, says, how's the real estate market? And I answered him. And then he said, um, he said, you know, this guy wants to buy something. And I said, oh yeah. And we got, we just talked for a second. He asked for a card. He's got some questions. He's going to send me an email. I haven't gotten it yet, but um, I, I did make the mistake of not, um, you know, getting down his information, but um, so it's not just good enough to hand your card. You want to extract the information. Um, so Andrew, good job doing that. But you never know where business is going to come from, guys. And as I was walking away, right after I handed him my card, I was walking away to go back to, to finish dinner with my family. And I overheard Dan say, now, he's a really honest guy. 
you know, he, he works real hard. He, he takes care of his people, right? And he said that because I've been taking care of him for 10 years. Make sense? I've been supporting his business and I've been um, protecting him and, and, uh, and being a good partner, right? I've made plenty of deposits with that gentleman, right? Okay, beautiful. Okay, I wanna talk about um, a, a couple of things today. Number one, um, we are doing pretty good in terms of numbers. And I'm, I'm basically taking into account that we're about a little over halfway through with the month based on reporting. So if you've not completed your goals for any of the previous months, um, or you have not completed your uh, actuals, I'm, I'm sorry, weeks, or if you've not completed your actuals for any of the previous weeks, please go ahead and do so. I know most of you are, are pretty much there. There's a couple of you um, that still have a little bit of reporting to do. Um, we, are, we are pretty close to being on track. We're a little slow on the, on the actual transactions and closings, but I can tell by your appointments and by your listings and your uh, pendings that, that the leading indicators are there. We just got to give it time to, to go through the, the sales process, okay? Um, just to give you an idea, we have added, um, once everyone reports, we will almost certainly have the most contacts we've ever had in a month in the program. So congratulations on that. Um, the most total appointments that we've held was last month at 72, and right now we're at 46. So we're probably going to be a little short on that unless you guys really hustle these last couple of days. Um, our goal, remember, is to take 17 or to go on 17 listing appointments as a team and to take 13. Right now, I know there's some out there that haven't been announced, but um, right now we're at 15 listing appointments and 10 taken. Okay. Next. Um, we've also done pretty well on pendings. Um, once all the reporting comes in, there's a chance that we might have more pendings than we've ever had. We're at nine months to date right now. Um, and we've gone on 46 appointments, 15 of which are listings. So what that's telling me is that we, um, and I think that's a function of the care calls and not more salesy type calls. Um, but I want to make sure that we have an awareness that we're aiming to secure more seller listings than buyer listings. That's going to give us more flexibility. It's going to give us more control over the lead flow and your ultimate income. Okay. All right, it's the end of the month, and I wanna um, encourage you to, I wanna talk about two, two concepts. One is, um, I posted a link in the page the other day, um, I forget which page I posted, in. it's uh, Ben Kinney. Does anyone know who Ben Kinney is? Ben Kinney's the number one agent in Keller Williams. He's out of Bellingham, Washington. Um, and he has uh, expansion networks, I mean, he's just, it would take us all day to talk about all the things he's, he's involved in. Okay. Um, he's doing an eight part series. It started on Monday, I believe it's all free and it's a, on wealth, a wealth series. I'm going to encourage you guys to, um, watch those. Uh, if you go to win, make give.com win, make give.com, you can register for the series, um, completely for free. There's no like, gotchas there's no if you forget to cancel your subscription next month we're going to charge you no up sales none of that stuff there's a bunch of free worksheets on uh, everything from net worth calculators to um, investment analysis pages and all this kind of stuff and it's going to end up being about eight hours worth of um, uh, youtube videos that you can watch um, today the or yesterday i guess i watched it this morning or listened to it this morning they were talking about net worth calculating. And one of the things that I took away from that, if you have not calculated your net worth, that's something I, I would highly recommend that you that you do. Um, and I can walk you through some of those steps or you can listen to the to the recording and get a real thorough explanation of how to do that. Um, but one of the things that we talked about was this idea of accounting is the precursor to accountability. And we also talked about the fact that if you don't know where you're at, then you don't know how to react to where you're at. 
and you don't know how to take steps forward from where you're at. So if, if you, you know, are never look at the account balance on your credit card bill or how much you owe on a car or how much you owe on student debt or what your house is worth versus what you owe on it, you're not helping yourself. Okay, you need to take an honest approach uh, to where you are financially so that you can work with people like myself to create a strategy to get you into the situation that you want to get into. Okay. Bill? So I think, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just wanted to mention my husband and I use an app called a, a program called Wealthfront. And we keep track of everything in there and it allows you to kind of play with scenarios. You know, say I you know, decide to make a big purchase, cash purchase, how's that going to impact my long term, um, you know, or I decide to stop contributing to a 401, you know, to my 401ks, how's that going to impact my long term wealth building. So it allows I love you to that. Do scenarios, it, you know, it tracks what you currently have, as long as you, of course, allow it to get get that information from it. So we found it very, very helpful. That's called Wealthfront, F-O-F-R-O-N-T dot com? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. And I know you're, you've been um, involved in the, in the years past with Dave Ramsey and have done some financial peace construction. Is that right? Yeah, I led it for 10 years at my church. That's awesome. So um, while I, I will admit I'm not, a, the, I don't agree with everything he says. Um, he's got oh, but I don't agree with everything my husband says either. Well, I'm not getting there. I'm not going there. I'm dying. That's funny. I agree with you, Pam. We'll just leave it at that. Leave it at that. Although this will be on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> My husband knows I don't agree with everything he says. Or everything I say, I guess, probably. Um, if we both agree, so one of us is re redundant. <laughs> the other thing, um, so I, I, I want you to to take that same approach when you're analyzing your real estate business, okay? And I'm, there's no judgment here whatsoever. But this is, as we approach the end of the month, I want you to take a real hard look at how this month was for you in real estate, right? How did I, um, what habits did I do? Did I do well in? Which habits did I not do well in? How did I use my time? How did I improperly use my time? Or how did I waste my time? Or did I, right? What did I spend time on that didn't serve me or the people I care about, right? What, what did I do with my time that really seemed to work, right? What do I want to double down on and what do I want to eliminate, right? Were there certain people that I interacted with this month that didn't serve, did, didn't serve me, that gave me kind of a, uh, that just didn't make me feel good, right? That didn't make me feel positive, didn't give me energy. Were there people that I spent time with that did give me a lot of energy, right? That made me think the way I need to think so I can get what I want, right? Ben Kenny talks, that's what freedom is. I can do what I want, when I want, with whoever I want. That's what freedom is, right? And oftentimes the biggest barrier to freedom is money, right? And so um, I want you to take a real hard look at your, at your professional world and your numbers and say, hey, did I give it 100% this month? You know, on a scale of one to 10, what's the health of my business? How good of a worker am I, right? Because remember, we, we're the, we occupy, I think everyone on the call is a, is a solo, um, yeah, is a solo agent, right? That's so me. not only, not only are you, or I'm sorry, Pam, you, you know that. Um, not only are you the worker bee, right? Doing all the lead gen, all the admin, all the follow up, all the presentations, all the everything, but you also own the place, right? So if you if you you're the CEO of your own organization, right? So when you step into the C, remember you got to have time to take off the worker bee hat and put on the CEO hat and say, how's my worker bee doing? Does my worker bee need a day off? Does my worker bee need better leadership skills? Does he, he or she need to practice his scripts? Right? Does my worker bee need to um, adjust the environment that they spend time in? Do they need to study the comp or the, the, the data more? Right? Do they need to study their objection handlers more? Right? And how can we make sure that the work, and I don't, I'm not trying to 
call you all worker bees, but understand that you are self-employed. And until you find somebody else to help you, you essentially just own your job, right? I wanna get you to the other side of the cash flow quadrant like Robert Kiyosaki talks about, where you have leverage in your life and other people are helping you achieve your goals while you're helping them achieve their goals, by the way, right? So um, I want you to take an account accountability, I want you to take stock in how you performed this month and make a commitment to improve it, okay? I'm not saying double it or triple it or anything like that. I want you to make progress, okay? Fair enough? Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for some feedback right now because it's the end of the month for me too. And um, that's why I'm asking, that's part of the reason why I'm asking for tracking so I can see how I'm performing, right? Obviously how you guys are performing, but, but me too, right? If I've got somebody on the call or not, or unfortunately not on the call, um, are they, do they have their head in the sand? Are they, is there something going on health wise or emotionally or mentally that's preventing them from hitting their potential? Because all you guys can can do more than you're doing right now. My job is to, to, to squeeze that out of you, okay? And to first give you an awareness that it's there, and then we partner up and we figure out how to squeeze more out of you. Make sense? All right, so in all fairness, I'm gonna ask to see, to, for some feedback on how I'm doing. Remember, the mission of this group is to create a community of learning-based and purpose-driven leaders focused together on accelerating the trajectory of our businesses and the quality of our lives. Using the powerful leverage of Keller Williams models, systems, and technology, we intend to create abundant lives for ourselves and for those we support. Um, one, one allusion that we made to the community earlier was when Andrew you know, shares, for example, his digital business card and he shares how he did it, right? And that helps Ebony um, accomplish more on her to-do list. That's an example of creating a community. How are we doing with that statement? Are we living that out? I'm sorry, Bill. Can you say, we say that one more time? I was responding to a um, I, I read the, read the mission of the group, yes. and then I asked for some candid feedback on um, how are we doing? Is this something that is relevant to us? Is this something we take seriously? Is this something we want to, um, there's ways to improve on? Um, are you guys getting what you want? Just, I, I was asking basically everyone to uh, take accountability of their personal life and their finances. And then I asked everyone to take accountability of their professional life and their business <clears throat> and the results of all their activities. And then in all fairness, I asked for uh, some feedback on how I'm doing running the mission that you guys all agreed to take part in. I think you're doing awesome. This, this has helped me so much. Um, I feel more productive than I ever have in my life, to be honest. And um, I feel like I'm learning something new every day. You know, yesterday, something big I learned, um, actually, well, from Aubrey, but it was about- That's cool. uh, We're we're all a team, right? Yeah. Well, it was I do my stuff. Of, he does his. We all help each other out. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's just the ideas that are bouncing off of you know the other uh, people in this group and you and you know we always have something to kind of focus on and yeah, I, I think it's helped me out a lot tremendously. Good. Lead leadership, they say, is helping you think the way you need to think so that you can get what you want when you want it. <laughs> right that's why the millionaire real estate agent talks about think a million before anything else that's why the shirt says think like a ceo that's why the 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 name of gary and jay's podcast is think like a ceo you gotta think it first right then everything else falls into place okay who else wants to share something i'm not asking for a series of compliments although i do appreciate them but does anyone have any suggestions I don't have any suggestions, but I feel like the group, um, as inexperienced agents, it's nice to have a group of people that you can um, reach out to, to see if they've had similar experiences to get 
information on next steps, that sort of thing. So I know the whole office is kind of available for that. And we do have designated mentors. Having this, this group, it's almost like a family and it's yeah. a support, a support system, a safety net. Um, and you feel like you're not alone. So that's how I feel about it. That's and awesome to hear. That, that's, that is what I'm trying to create for you. And it's also right. that level of accountability too. You, you, you're accountable to your, your teammates, you know, to other people in the group. Right. I it's agree. like sometimes if I, if I were to say, I'm going to go to the gym at five o'clock tomorrow morning. And when the alarm goes off for me to go to the gym and I'm like, eh, do I really want to go to the gym? But if I'm meeting somebody at the gym, I'm there. And if I'm not, there call the cops something's wrong <laughs> like i think that this is like literally i've been trying to get pushed past my comfort zone for a long time but i'm stubborn like i am stuck in my own ways and this has helped and again even with this zoom platform not my most comfortable way like i'm very hands-on i'm okay with classroom settings because my personality is big and i, I can't show that through the computer so being pushed past my comfort zone as well as the accountability, accountability, I don't want to get on this call and don't want to know anything. I don't want to be on the call, you know, and this is just my own, for my own self and yeah. not have nothing to bring to the table. So I, again, I piggyback off of what everyone else is saying, family orientation, well, family like yeah. here, and it's just, it's supportive and you're doing a great job. So thank you. I do think you're welcome. Thank you. I, um, I do think, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I heard you correctly a second ago, but, you know, you think of ways you can be yourself on camera, right? What's in, what's in the background, right? Do you have like a, like a, like a thing? Like there's one, there's one woman who is um, an owner. Her name is, uh, oh, forget her name. She's an owner of a market center in um, North Carolina. And her thing is she wears every every time every day she wears green like that's her thing right and there's somebody else like there's a um an agent that i was uh fortunate enough to attract to the company a couple of years ago and she's in the woodstock office and her thing is she wears like a big like like kind of flower thing in her hair all every day like if you've got like if you want to show your personality like think about how you can show it i mean Ebony, and for this, this is for the rest of you too, like any job you do right now is going to involve Zoom. Like, so unless you just want to hole up and not communicate with the world for the next six months, you gotta be, you better get comfortable with Zoom. <laughs> like, I wish I could tell you it's different, but it ain't different, right? All right, I want to, um, I want to just spend a second um, finishing this. I want to, oh God, does that help? No. Hello, 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 hello. My granddaughter is sitting here in my lap enjoying it, Bill. Is she having fun? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna pull it up for you guys, but I'm gonna pull it up for myself. <laughs> All right, I already got it figured out. We're gonna finish talking about the FHA loan exhibit for the next couple of moments, okay? Um, but, uh, oh, by the way, all the videos are up, up to date. Everything that we've recorded is up to date. It's all on YouTube. So if you're not familiar, if you don't have the YouTube link, let me know. It's in a number of emails that I have sent out. And um, if you have a question, there's tons of resources on there. GPS, 411, business planning, uh, orientation, all kinds of stuff. Okay. I also put the link to the YouTube in the in the description on our. Oh yeah, that's right. We already had that conversation a couple weeks ago. Thank you for so that. I put the YouTube link there and the Google Drive link in the description for the help group. So we, it's a place you can just always go see it. 
Beautiful. Okay, we're going to go back to page two of the FHA loan exhibit. And the deal with this is, um, I, I remember I forgot to mention one thing yesterday. So section 11 has a line called the amendatory clause. This is essentially the appraisal contingency. So in a conventional loan exhibit, you have a, um, uh, an appraisal contingency and the loan exhibit are combined. This is the same way on the FHA. Now, FHA, well, let me say it the other way. Um, there is an a, a appraisal contingency in a conventional loan, and they make you uh, define how many days that's going to be. Generally, again, it's about 21 to 25 days. However, if you're working with a lender you've not worked with before, or you don't have a relationship with, you want to call that lender and say, is this enough time? I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I want to set us up for success together, okay? Um, on FHA, and, and so it has a definitive limit, time limit. FHA, it doesn't have a definitive time limit, which means that the appraisal could come in low or bad or whatever up until the day of closing. It's not a 21 day time period or 25 day time period, okay? So in section 11, you would write, um, I always write contract sales price, but what probably makes the most sense is to write the actual sales price in there. So that is basically saying that if, let's say the home's under contract for 275 and the appraisal comes in short of that and the buyer's using an FHA loan, they are not required to buy that home. They could come to the table with the difference if they want, um, or of course, try to renegotiate with the seller, um, but there's no obligation to buy that home, okay? Um, section 12 is the upfront mortgage insurance premium is 1.75%. And more often than not, it is 12 is B, which is, an, is added to the loan amount and financed. There's really not a whole lot of incentive just to pay it in cash up front. And oftentimes the reason why people are using an FHA loan is because they don't have 10 or 15 or 20% to put down. And this loan allows them to put down three and a half percent. Okay. Bill, I want to add, just make sure if you're putting in the loan amount on number 11, I mean the sales price, that if that changes, you have to change this exhibit as well. That's right. That's why I always used to put down contract sales price. Melba I yelled agree. at me once for it, but um, it was just once. So did everyone hear what Melba said, or I'm sorry, what Pam said? So if you happen to put the sales price in there, let's say you're going back and forth with an offer and you put down 270 in there, but then you end up agreeing to a price of 275, you need to have 275 in that blank. Okay, um, we talked about number 14, which is lender uh, tax service fees are included. Um, I don't know why they have that in there, but it's just a, a, a specific example of what, what's considered a closing cost, and it's saying that is considered a closing cost. Okay, this is something unique to FHA loans. Okay, when the appraiser comes out, they're not just doing an appraisal of value. They are doing an appraisal of condition. Okay, and what FHA is verifying, or the appraiser is verifying, is that the home meets the standards um, in which they the government will issue this, this FHA loan. So generally speaking, they're health and safety related. Here is a list of a couple of things that will cause a problem, okay? Active reef leaks, or potentially signs of active reef leaks, or maybe even signs of previously re previous reef leaks that may have even been corrected, yet they didn't paint it. Right, so if there's moisture stands coming out of the ceiling, they're probably gonna find that, okay? Missing handrails. So for example, um, I, I don't know the exact thing, I think it's like three feet or three and a half feet. If you've got like a stoop in the front of your house or a step in front of the house and there's no handrail, they're probably gonna make you have a handrail there, okay? Broken glass, it's usually a big one, broken glass. So broken window, they may catch that, they're gonna want that fixed prior to closing. Um, uh, obvious signs of mold, like really obvious signs of mold. They're going to want that dealt with. Uh, Pam, can you think of any others? Um, no, those those are pretty much the main ones I see. I've you know, well, actually, I've never had one called out. Knock on wood, but um, wow. <laughs> yeah. So these are. This is not the the appraiser's not going through the home and like checking the electrical outlets. 
They're looking yeah, they're, for health and safety related things. So you still need a home inspection, okay? Yeah, and, and I mean, they spend 30, maybe 45 minutes there, whereas an inspection, an inspector spends several hours. Yeah, and sometimes nowadays, because the appraisers are getting paid so little, and uh, they may even spend less time than that. Right. Okay, section 15. This is basically pre-negotiating any re to resolve any of those issues. So for example, any repairs required in the FHA commitment shall be completed and paid for by blank, I would say seller, right? Prior to closing such that repairs do not exceed X. Um, I would generally put a number that reflects what I might be concerned about. So if I see a missing handrail or I see mold or I see a piece of broken glass or something like that, I might put two, $3,000 there. If I don't see anything that like really stands out to me, I'd probably put about 500 bucks there. And I put a thousand dollars there just because that's what my buyer is already out by paying for the FHA appraiser and the inspector. I never thought about it that way. That's a good way to put it. That's, that's a good way to do it. So let's say put a thousand dollars there. Um, and what that will do um, is if the appraiser identifies an issue and says this needs to be fixed prior to closing, the seller will already pay that. If the amount that needs to be paid to fix the, to remedy these issues goes beyond this number, then the buyer is not um, uh, obligated to buy the home, number one. And secondly, um, you would go back and renegotiate it, okay? If the home is not connected to public sewer, um, that is where item 18 comes in. That's probably not going to happen much. Um, although I do remember um, if your home is on septic and there is sewer on the street, you need to, that's complicated. Um, if they have a rule that says like if the sewer is uh, a certain distance from the house, then you may have to hook to the sewer, which is really expensive. So if the home is on septic, you want to look to see is there sewer anywhere near. Right. Okay. Um, and then section number 20 talks about, is this an arm's length transaction? An arm's length transaction is basically a willing seller working with a willing buyer where there's no um, like really unique thing going on. Like it's not like I'm selling the home to my, my wife or daughter or something like that. Right. Um, or I'm selling the home to like a corporation that I have an ownership in these kind of things. Does anyone want to add to that? I just say there's no, I, I consider it, they have no prior relationship. Right. So um, that's true. Although like if they're friends, I don't think that makes it a non arms length transaction. Right. That's what, yeah. If they were just friends, I wouldn't consider that an I would, if they were just friends, I would consider that an arm's length transaction. If they were, like Pam said, a past relationship, like if they were related by family or I have even yeah, a financial relationship. Yeah, financial relationship or um, a an in law relationship. You know, a brother in law's sister. You know, something like that. Right. You said you saw a lot of. You saw a lot of fraud happening uh, many years ago with like short sales where like somebody was about to lose their home and the bank was about to take a hundred thousand dollar loss and they ended up selling it to like a cousin and the cousin ended up selling it back to them afterwards or let them stay there. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff happening. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, Susan, uh, myself, Pam, Kathy, we're all here to assist you. Okay. Just pop it in the group. Somebody will answer, and if, it, if it's too hairy, then we'll have you talk to Melba, okay? I just Googled it, and arm's length is a relationship between two parties who are unrelated or strangers. Thus, each owes no special obligation to the other party. So that kind of implies that if you are friends, if you will, you should disclose that. I did when I bought a house from a friend. Interesting. Okay. You know, when in doubt, disclose. There you go. All right, we're going to end on that.
We have our big session today from one o'clock to two o'clock. Um, got some uh, plenty of stuff I, um, I'm happy to share with you. Uh, please don't forget to update your numbers. It only takes a millisecond. Um, I will see you at one o'clock today, one o'clock to two o'clock today. And I uh, just want to remind you, I will be out tomorrow. Um, so Kathy, I believe, is going to run the 8.30 session. So tune in to here at 8.30 tomorrow. And then Robin Lemon, um, and I sent a video with Robin introducing herself. That will be um, from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. So you guys have an awesome weekend and uh, finish the month strong. Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks, Bill. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks.